SEO is all about optimizing your website to rank higher in search engines like Google Search, and the result is ultimately more traffic, leads, branding, and sales. SEO has one of, if not the highest ROI compared to other marketing activities. So today, I'm excited to share my top seven SEO tips for WordPress blogs and how you can work your way up to ranking your posts on the first page of Google Search. Okay, so before we go ahead and launch into this SEO guide, consider subscribing if you haven't done so already or if you're new to this channel, and that way you'll stay updated with actionable videos and tutorials designed to equip you with the skills, knowledge, and tools to help your small business thrive online. And with that happy note out of the way, let's go ahead and dive into my top seven SEO tips for WordPress. <music> Okay, so here we are on my WordPress website, and this is a post example that's ranking well on Google search. Now, these top seven essential SEO tips that I'm going to share with you today, I engage in every day to rank my website posts, and I currently have 89 posts that rank on the first page of Google search. And make sure that you stick around to the end of this video because each of the tips that I'm going to cover today are essential for SEO and you need to be aware of these activities if you want to rank your website pages, your posts on the first page of Google search. And I'll also cover two bonus tips at the very end of this video, so make sure you don't miss those. Okay, so my first tip is to ensure that your page structure is set up correctly. And this means having the right headers in place. For example, this is my post title and your post title should always be a header one. Then below that we have header two. This is a header two subtitle here. And if I navigate over to the left hand side and expand my Elementor page builder and then click on this text box, you can see that this header here is a header two. Then below that we have paragraph text over here. You can see paragraph here and you can simply change any of these text elements by simply navigating up here and clicking the drop down, paragraph, header two, three, four, and more down here. Now, as you can see, I'm using Elementor as my page builder. However, if you're not using a page builder like Divi or Elementor, then I'll show you how to make changes to your titles, to your text elements in the back end of WordPress shortly. Okay, so going back to your heading structure, you should always have one header one, then header twos, and within header twos, you can add header threes and header fours and more if you like, depending on the structure of your post. But you don't want to jump around and have, say, a header two, then a header four, then a header one, then a header five. You want to make sure that your website pages are structured correctly. So again, let's look at this post. We have header one here. Then we have a header two. Let's highlight that. You can see this is a header two. Then below header two, we just have paragraph text and most of your content will be paragraph text. Then if we navigate down the page and click on this text element here, you can see the next header is a heading two. And then below this heading, let's click on this text box. You can see that this is a heading three. And if I navigate down, you can see we have another heading here, heading three. And then if we navigate down this post even further, and let's go ahead and click on this text section, you can see we have another heading three. So this particular post is made up of one header one, multiple header twos, and then each of the website builders that I'm talking about are header threes. As you can see, if we navigate down, this is a heading three. If we navigate down further, we have a heading three here. And then if we navigate down further, and let's click on here, you can see that within each of these sections, we have heading four. So this is a heading four, this is a heading four, and then these two subtitles down here are heading fours. So I hope that makes sense. You wanna make sure that you structure your post correctly using the right headers and paragraphs. Okay, so let's jump into the back end of a WordPress website that doesn't use a page builder. Okay, so here we are in the back end of an example website using the Gutenberg editor. Now, if we navigate up here, we have the title. This is a heading one. If we navigate down, this is a heading two. And if we click here, we can go ahead and change the heading if we like. Below that, we have paragraph text here, and you can see that paragraph symbol over here. I can click here and change that if I like. And then if we navigate down further, you can see we have another heading. This is a heading two. 
And let's see what other headings we have in this post to make sure that this post is set up correctly. We have another heading two, I'm happy with that. And again, another heading two. And then over here we have a heading three. And then down here we have another heading three. Now you can see that this section of this blog post is all about adding pages to your business suite. Then below this we have a step-by-step -step process of how you can add pages to your business suite. So maybe this could be rather than a paragraph, I'm gonna change this to a header and change the header to header four. So now we have header three, header four, and then paragraph text here. And once you've made any of those changes, make sure you preview before publishing those changes. Okay, so let's head back to our previous blog post example. Now having the right structure in place for your blog post is going to help Google determine the hierarchy of your content, the flow of your content. And that's gonna help search engines like Google crawl your content and ultimately rank higher on search engines. Okay, so now that you understand your post structure and adding the correct headers and text formatting to your posts, we can now move on to the second tip, which is all about keywords. Essentially, what you wanna do is identify the primary keywords that you wanna rank your post for. So each of your different posts will have different targeted keywords. For example, with this post, a primary keyword that I'm targeting is AI website builders. And if we navigate through this post, you can see that we have AI website builders, this primary keyword throughout this content. We have this primary keyword in some of our subheaders, as well as in our primary header, our header one. And then if we navigate down, we also have this keyword, this primary keyword in our paragraph content. Another keyword that I'm targeting is AI tools. You can see I've got AI tools in here and also up here and throughout this post. Again, you can see we have AI website builders and another long tail keyword that I'm targeting is best AI website builders. You can see this keyword in this subtitle. And again, if I navigate up to the top in my header one, I also have this long tailed keyword, best AI website builders. So each post that you're creating should have targeted keywords that you wanna rank for on search engines like Google Search. And there are many free and paid keyword research tools that you can simply use to identify the right keywords that you want to target. Essentially, you wanna target keywords that have a relatively high search volume, so people are actually searching for those keywords, and also keywords that don't have high competition. Because if you're targeting keywords with high competition, then it's gonna make it extremely hard to rank your post high in search engines. In terms of free keyword research tools, you can use Ubersuggest, Keywords Everywhere, and Google's Keyword Planner. If you're interested in learning more about keyword research, what I'll do is add a beginner's tutorial up above and down below in the description, which will help you get started with these free keyword research tools to engage in keyword research. Now, I'll also add a tutorial down below that will cover a premium keyword research and marketing tool called SEMrush. This is a more advanced and premium keyword research tool. However, I've created a beginner's tutorial to help you get started. So go ahead and check out those two tutorials if you're new to or wanna learn more about keyword research. Now, just quickly before I get back to this video, I just wanna mention my all-in-one digital playbook that you guys might be interested in called Go Digital Now, the ultimate small business playbook. This dynamic book took me a year to create and is ideal for small business owners, new and existing, that are looking for a clear-cut digital roadmap for setting up the right tools, systems, activities, and strategies so that you can absolutely dominate online. I will add a link in the description below this video if you want to learn more about Go Digital now. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get back to this video. Next, what we want to talk about is images and videos. You want to make sure that you're breaking up your content on your post with videos that you've embedded as well as images. Adding relevant images and videos to your post is going to enhance your SEO. Google likes to see mixed media in your post, not just text. And it also breaks up your text and helps with reader usability and navigation. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is click on the sidebar and then locate this image here. So here's the image I've added. All I did is clicked on add media to add this image and I'm gonna go ahead and click on edit. Now you can see I have this alt text, 10 web AI website builder. This is a keyword that I want to target because I'm talking about 10 web, which is an AI website builder in this section of this post. So remember we talked about keywords. This is a keyword that I want to add as an alt text to my image. 
And it's important to do this to help Google identify what this image is about. It's also an opportunity for you to add a keyword to your image. And ideally, when you upload an image, you want to make sure that you've named your image a keyword that you want to target. OK, so what I'm going to do is exit out of here. And in terms of the sizes of the images that you're adding to your post, you want to make sure that those images are optimized and are not large in size because you want your page and images to load quickly. Ideally, you want your website pages and post pages to be under one megabyte. OK, now if we navigate down to a video, you can see that I've embedded a video from YouTube in this section of my post. And by embedding relevant videos from YouTube into your blog posts, this will also help boost your SEO. The two largest search engines on the planet are Google search and YouTube search. So you want to make sure that you're leveraging both of these platforms to drive more traffic and optimize your website for SEO. So again, make sure you're adding relevant images and videos throughout your content. Next, we want to talk about optimizing the user navigation using table of contents. OK, so here we have a preview of this blog post. Now, if I navigate down under the featured image, you can see I have a table of contents. Now, if I click expand, you can see that this table of contents has pulled in my header twos, header twos. Then we have header threes down here and a header two for my final thoughts. So these are all the different sections within this blog post. And this helps my website visitors, my readers find the right information that they're looking for. For example, if I navigate down to, let's say, durable and click here, that's going to automatically send that website visitor to this section of that blog post. OK, so I'm going to navigate down and head back up to the top and then locate table of contents. And again, let's go ahead and click on why use an AI website builder. You can see that's going to take that website visitor to this section of this blog post. And this is vital for SEO because it greatly increases the user experience. This is also going to help generate the different items within your blog post on Google search. For example, if someone is typing a keyword related to a post that you've created and they find your post on Google search and before they click on that post, they can see your different sections down here. And you can achieve this by optimizing the structure of your pages using a table of contents. Now, if you're interested in learning how to add a table of contents to your blog post, then what I'll do is add a beginner's tutorial up above and down below in the description, which will guide you through two different methods for adding a table of contents to your blog post. So go ahead and check out that video if you currently do not have a table of contents for your blog post. Again, this is my fourth essential tip for optimizing your WordPress website. Next, we want to talk about the meta title and meta description. To do that, I'm going to jump into the back end of this post. OK, so here we are inside the back end of my WordPress post. Now, the back end might look slightly different to yours, depending on the WordPress version that you're using. Now, in terms of your title and meta description, you want to make sure that these are optimized for SEO. So as you can see, if we navigate up here, we have my title. And like I mentioned, we have a few keywords. We've got best AI website builders. This is a keyword. We've also got AI website builders, which is a variation of that keyword. And then we have AI website builders for small business. This is a long tailed keyword. You want to make sure that your title is compelling so that when a potential website visitor finds your post on Google search, they click through to that post. Now, one of the best and easiest ways to add a title and description to your blog post is by installing a plugin called Yoast SEO. And essentially what that does is allows you to have this Yoast SEO section within each of your pages and posts. Here you can add your focus keyword. So ours is AI website builders. Then if we navigate down here, we can add an alternative SEO title and then we can also add the slug that appears on search engines. You can see a preview up here. You can also preview what your title and meta description will look like on mobile results as well as desktop results on Google search. Then if we navigate down, we can control the meta description. So this is this section up here that displays on Google search or in search results on other search engines. Again, I find it's best practice to essentially add your SEO title in here, but just make it slightly different to your main page title that you added up here. As you can see, it's essentially the same, but I've just changed it slightly and Google will display the best option on search engines. 
Now, if we take a look at the meta description, again, this displays under your title in search engines. You wanna make sure that you have your keywords in here. Now, as you can see, I do not have AI here, so I'm gonna go ahead and add AI. And now I have seven best AI website builders. I'm gonna navigate over here and delete top, and that's gonna bring me back under the right character limit. You wanna make sure that your SEO title and your description shows green, meaning that your title and description isn't too long or too short. Again, once you've made any changes, make sure that you update your post. Now, if you wanna learn more about getting started with the free Yoast SEO plugin, then what I'll do is add a beginner's tutorial up above and down below in the description to help you get started with Yoast SEO. And also what I'll do is add a tutorial in the description, which will guide you through a more detailed video for creating your meta title and description. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is head back to the front end of this post. Next, what I wanna do is talk about links. These are internal, external, and backlinks. And again, each of these types of links are important for SEO. So if we navigate down the page, you can see that we have a few hyperlinked words over here. Now, this is what we call an external link because this link, if I click here, will take the user to this website, which is an external website. And I added this external link because this section talks about this website. Okay, so I'm gonna head back. Again, as you can see, this is an external link. If we navigate down, you can see we have another hyperlink here. Now this is what we call an internal link. And if I click here, that's gonna take me to a different article, a different page on my website. It's internally linking to another page, another post on my website. As you can see, that's gonna take me to this relevant post that I briefly referred to in the previous post. Okay, so I'm gonna head back and then navigate down further. As you can see, we have other links here and these are actually anchor links. And if I click on one of these links, that's gonna take me down to that specific post. However, we're not gonna talk about anchor links in this tutorial. Now, if I navigate down here, you can see we have another internal link, which sends the website visitor, if they click here, to the relevant post that I've created in the past. And again, if we scroll down, you can see we have a link here. This is an external link. Then we have another internal link and another internal link here. And by adding internal links, that's gonna show Google search that you are an authority, that you have other relevant articles and resources about a specific topic. That's also going to send link juice between your different posts. So internal linking is important. Again, this helps with user navigation and providing the right information for your website visitors to find. Again, we also have external links, which aren't as important. So if I navigate back up to an external link, you can see we have an external link here and another external link here. Again, this is important if you're referencing information. This could be a citation from a different site then you want to add an external link and link that relevant website or website page or resource. And you can see I've done that here. A large portion of websites on the internet are built with WordPress over 40%. And I've referenced the website page that I found this 40% on. And next we wanna talk about backlinks. And this is one of the most vital activities for SEO. And it's all about getting your post links on other authoritative websites. For example, if a different website online found this post and they wanted to link to this post, then they're sending link juice back to this post. And this shows Google that this must be a relevant resource because an external website is linking this post on their post. And the more high quality and relevant websites that are pointing back to your website, the better it is for your brand and SEO. And there are many paid and organic strategies for generating backlinks. If you're interested in learning more about backlinks, what I'll do is add a beginner's tutorial up above and down below in the description for you to check out. Now, if you're a local business, you want to make sure that you've got local citations that are pointing back to your website. And this is going to help your local SEO. So if you have a local business and you operate in a geographical location, then you wanna make sure that you're signing up to all the local citations in your area that are relevant to your business. If you wanna learn more about local SEO and using local citations to boost your SEO, then what I'll do is add that tutorial in the description for you to check out. 
Okay, so now that we've briefly discussed backlinks, external links, and internal links, we can now move on to the essential SEO tip number seven, which is all about sharing and engagement. And what you wanna do is make sure that you're sharing your posts across your different social media channels and link your post and add a caption that's going to drive engagement. And by sharing your posts across your different social media channels and getting engagement on those posts, that's gonna help with social proof and social signals being sent back to your website. Google notices social engagement and that's gonna help with your SEO. Think about it, if your posts are successful across different social media channels and they're receiving lots of engagement in terms of likes, comments, and shares, then Google will see that your post is valuable. So make sure that you share your posts across social media as well as to your email list to drive engagement and social signals. And as I promised, I just want to talk about my two last bonus tips for SEO. And these are AI images and text plus consistency. Now, if you have a WordPress website, most likely you're already using a page builder to build out your website pages and posts. Two popular visual page builders that I like to use and recommend are Elementor's page builder and the Divi theme or Divi page builder. These page builders essentially allow you to create your website from the front end, and recently they both released AI features, meaning that you can generate images using AI as well as text with AI. And in terms of benefiting your SEO, the text AI generator that both these tools offer help with SEO because what you can do is add a prompt like, please rewrite this section and add a specific keyword throughout this text. And essentially the AI text generator that these tools offer help guide you to create SEO optimized content. Now, if you don't wanna use any of these visual page builders, you can also use AI writing tools like ChatGPT or Copy AI, which are free AI text generators. Okay, so last but not least, my final bonus tip for optimizing your WordPress website for SEO is all about consistency. You can't just create three, five, 10, or even 20 posts and hope that those posts are gonna rank on search engines like Google. You need to consistently be producing high quality SEO optimized blog posts on your website. And this is going to help your website with SEO. You want to continuously create new content as well as update older posts. You've heard it many times, consistency is key and it truly is especially when it comes to SEO and dominating search engines like Google search. Ideally, what you wanna do is put a plan in place. Do you have the capacity to post once, twice, or three times per week and consistently for six to 12 months or more? Also, naturally with consistency, you will improve over time. However, that is everything that I wanted to cover in this tutorial, helping you dominate with SEO. And there we have it guys, that is it for this brief WordPress SEO tutorial for beginners. Now, if you have any questions about this tutorial, make sure to pop them down below. And with that said, thank you so much for watching this tutorial all the way through to the end. If you got value, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to this channel, and that way I'll see you in the next video. Take care everyone.